I wanted to, and I think some of you have already kind of hinted at this when you first started. So I wanted to delve a little bit more into this. How important in your opinion is place or region to what you do? Um, and again, situating it within the black family experience because you're all looking at different locations and, and re, you know, spaces that have their own stories that I think is really important for the, for the audience to understand. Oh, okay. I will start. I'm in a, I'm sorry, it got noisy here. <laughs> so place matters for everything. So I really take an intersectional approach where place and geography matters because it matters to the institutions that support families if they need it. It means economic opportunity <coughs> and the health of the black community is place specific that without understanding the places where these communities are and families are, you can't understand the on the ground dynamics, personalities and struggles. So place for me is one of those categories I take very seriously. And I know people in rural Pennsylvania's experiences are different than in Richmond and are different than in Baltimore. So what are those local particulars that um, require and develop these family histories and community studies. Yeah, I agree. Um, it is everything. And, you know, I think anybody who studies, on the one hand, war should always be mindful of place and region and geography. I mean, war unfolds across, you know, a lot of variants in landscape, environment, economies, cultures, and military historians have been telling us that for a long time. And then, you know, with what I've been studying, slavery, of course, unfolded across a vast geography and, and really took on uh, different forms, or you could say it adapted to uh, many different local environments. I mean, that's kind of the insidious thing about slavery. It always could adapt. It could always sort of grow in any sort of place and, uh, you know, still be um, as oppressive as it was. So I think it makes sense, you know, in my case, if I'm studying and, and we're all studying a war that destroyed slavery, you know, if you've got both of those considerations in mind, you have to think of it as something that plays out differently or potentially plays out differently from place to place. Um, and I just would, you know, I've been, I have to confess, I've been very like Eastern focused mm -hmm in my study of the war. Um, I guess that's how I came of age as a civil war historian. But, you know, I did just read Alice Baumgardner's book, South to Freedom, and there are, there's many other uh, good works coming out about the West. And uh, so probably need to get more expansive in thinking about that geography. Right. And I have the same thing in my notes. Um, place and region changes everything. So we're all uh, thinking alike there. I feel so good about that. Uh, no, seriously, uh, not only does it matter when we're looking at the Civil War and how it affects families, um, but it, it matters in the sense of before the war, where were these families living? Were they what geographic region were they living and were they free or enslaved within those regions? And then again, after the war, because you have movement, you have attempts to recreate families, you have families picking up and moving together. You have men who decide not to come home to their families and they go somewhere else. And so there is this great diversity of, of, of intermixing of a region mm -hmm. uh, throughout this time period so that once we think we're looking at some more studies on the West, that those people, um, these black families or former soldiers or sailors came from either New England or they came from the South or the Deep South, or the, right? So there's the one thing that I really um, want to make very clear is how much I feel strongly, and I'm hearing it from the two of you too, I think is the diversity of experiences. So every one of these questions is open up to multiple answers. Uh, and that's great for, for us that want to study this the rest of our lives because there's just so much. But but geography is it is it's everything for these families. Even how you identify family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, what makes this, especially what you've all said, really fascinating is 
resituating the conversation on the black family um, and then being able to talk in the different regions on things like living conditions, you know, housing. And I point to, uh, you know, in Battle Freedom, that's that was a very, one of the most pivotal things I took away was the housing um, conditions and, and the battles over like even the, the supplies to build a home, right? And, and what that meant. And for example, comparing that to the Philadelphian experience that I focus on is very different than what Hillary's book on the, the rural Black Pennsylvanian experiences on and their home structures, for example. Employment, yeah. without question, the types of work is going to be very different in a northern urban city, northeastern urban city, than in the Midwest, uh, than in the South or even the West. And I think educational experiences, I don't want to say the invasion, you know, but the the involvement of the federal government, you know, very much differs um, depending on the region and the location and the time. Mm -hmm. But what I also I think is important when I read your works in conversation with each other is how, what does it mean when these Northerners uh, come to the South or Southwest and are engaged, even if it's for, you know, a couple of years and they go back home and they live with those experiences of their, their Southern or Southwestern brethren. Because um, <clears throat> just, I give for example, there's a recent uh, edited uh, piece that I'm writing that basically is challenging the, the heroic narrative of Northern black soldiers who go into the South during reconstruction, because in many cases they're openly saying, I don't want to be here. I'm done. I want to go home to my family. But in making that open call, they're also in theory jeopardizing the safety of those who are freed. So even the, the, the tensions of the black family differs. Right? And especially when we keep it all centered on, on the war and its, its lasting impact. I think that's really important. And I think too, the migration matters. Yes. These people are not static, they are yes, mobile. Yes. And I keep on thinking about just the people who come into Richmond and Mobile to teach mm -hmm. in all the places that go, but also to the migration of African-Americans after the Civil War from mm -hmm. the rural areas into yes. small towns and cities and what that changes. Before the Great Migration, there there are people on the ground like, you're comp you're competing, right? You're here, but you're competing for a job with me. <laughs> and those that internal clashes over who's educated and who's not, and you can have different types of conversations when you start tracing movement of families and people, mm -hmm. but also the opportunities. I keep on thinking of Kelly's work with the veterans homes and the Grand Army of the Republic yes. and the Masons and all these national organizations that are allowed to exist after the Civil War because of the movement of people and recognizing there's communities that also they need to band together at times in different ways. So movement and migration in place, whether it's local but national matters. Right. too in various ways and what the ties that bind people together and sometimes it is the ties of the civil war and that experience i think we have to add spaces and space to that as well i mean you kind of referred to that by thinking about housing but i was struck by um the volia glimpse new book right. the women's fight where she talks about home and the meaning of home and the way home is imagined as a protected space right. but the way in which different women from different places can imagine it differently. And, and um, I just thought that was uh, an obvious, when we're talking about family, you know, that's an obvious space to think about as both a physical place, but also something in the imagination. And how does that play out for some of these migratory families? You know, how is home something that moves and, and right. so forth? Uh, I mean, I would just add, I think it's, the migration also, and, the, and as you point out, the connection to the war and its meaning, right? Mm -hmm. Particularly for free people. Um, there was a concerted effort, just looking at the case of Philadelphia, where hiring agencies willingly went into, and the Freedmen's Bureau were basically um, supporting or encouraging free people to come into Philadelphia to work jobs that were originally done by many Blacks, particularly even USET soldiers and their families, and that creates unemployment woes for them. So it brings in this tension and that would be a great project that I think could be even be its own book, just throwing it out there if someone wants to do this, but that would further complicate this conversation about um, you know, unified identity, right? Like the meaning of the war, employment, but also migration, the consequences it actually has long-term on the same people who helped to free them, right? That, that to me would be a conversation that needs to be further uh, deeply, you know, investigated. 
Uh, and I can't do it because I have too many other ideas. <laughs> and I'd add another kind of this kind of migration and movement and centering back within the military experience and, and how we can learn about the family uh, using some of those military records. Uh, there were, um, for example, soldiers in the 27th from Ohio and in their correspondence, they're talking about the fact that they have met family members that they had only heard about because mm -hmm. either they're in the same regiment or they are at the Petersburg front where you have between Petersburg and Richmond, the largest contingency of, of black soldiers during the war. And, and they're meeting people and they're talking about maybe moving to where they're living or Maybe there's a place that uh, the soldier's family would be more comfortable or have more job opportunities. And they're learning this through those relationships that they are either finding for the first time or reuniting uh, family ties. Uh, and again, that, that's not really about fighting the war, right? Mm -hmm. That's that social side that completely changes their life when they get home. Really yeah, and it's that social side that um, goes into even politics because one of the things looking at Pennsylvania, I'm like, black men can't vote in rural Pennsylvania, and they're jealous of the southern people who can during right. Reconstruction. But they form equal rights leagues, so the color convention movements, the other ways that they're binding together in those ties, and they're like, oh, I was with you at Petersburg, or I was here at City Point with you, and, and it's that type of familiarity. So when I think of families, I really think expansive. I don't think nuclear. Yes. And I think the multiple homes that people have, the home within the military, the home within the church, the home within the families. Right. And Amy, you're correct. I was thinking about um, Savolia's book, but also Joseph Reedy's book about mm -hmm. space and home. It's it's not, home is in itself a useful category as family. And we just need to really think about the people at the time, how they conceptualize it. Mm -hmm. and see it through their eyes versus always tw 21st century and really get it out because they had multiple lives and multiple needs because they were complex beings themselves. Right. Well, I think, um, and I want to come back to even Kelly's motivation doing a regimental history uh, because by doing that, for example, and then focusing on a specific city or town or county, um, as I've discovered, some of these soldiers are actually related. Um, so at least connecting it to the census, um, I, you know, happenstance discovered that three future soldiers all lived together as children and that, you know, two of them were brothers and one was a cousin and they have a very messy relationship in the post-war, which deals with infidelity and it's a lot of drama. But at the same time, the fact that I'm able to track them and then what is those experiences in the war mean? And that in some ways they're fighting their own personal familial war later, as you see playing out in the pension records, which is really fascinating. <laughs> But I think this is great. I mean, what there's a new um, edited volume that is going to be looking at the colored conventions that should be out pretty soon, which I definitely have on my radar. End of March, UNC yes. Press, <laughs> Gabby, P. Gabby Foreman. It is on my to purchase list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this is is important to just recognize the various ways that we're all and others are using the Civil War to really get at. I mean, we're not even talking about the tactical you know, aspects, which is important. We haven't even gotten to things of the disability, which is pivotal to understanding the long-term ramifications, the, the tensions over the, what is the public memory. And I think of Barbara Gannon's exceptional work on that, that she continues to do. And like the, all of these ways in which we can look at black families, black communities, black organizations as with the soldiering being the starting point, but not its end point, I think is important to recognize, as all of you have done. 